Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allie or Wavy Curly Allie. I am a healthy hair enthusiast, not a professional, just here sharing my tips and tricks on how to help you love your hair in its natural state. So today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my hair color and my hair cut. This is a category that I get a lot of questions on and in my recent post on Instagram, I asked you guys to ask me some questions on what you would like me to address in this video. But to start, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I prepare for color, what I do during color, and how I take care of my hair after. So let's get into it. Okay, so prior to color, this is kind of an ongoing thing, but it's important. Take care of your hair. Make sure you're doing deep conditioning treatments, just making sure you're uh, regularly conditioning, treating your hair really well. Um, I deep condition about once a week. This That's my hair's needs, and it works beautifully for me, so I typically, deep condition and then add some neutral protein filler. This is the Hydro Cream Soothing Mask from Curlsmith. This is one of my favorites, one of many, but I always go back to this one. It smells amazing. And I like to add a few drops, about three to five drops of neutral protein filler to the application of product. I don't apply it to the container. It will spoil the product. So apply it to the application in your hand, get it mixed in, and then apply it to your hair. As for how long I use it, um, anywhere from five minutes to 30 minutes, just depending on what my hair needs. If it's right before a color service, I will leave it on as long as possible, generally around 30 minutes. So that's really my pre-color prep. Some people like to do Olaplex treatments prior to their color service. I have chosen not to do that. I've done it before and I haven't seen a tremendous difference. Olaplex is also an expensive product, so I don't like to use it um, excessively, only as I need to. So. That's my pre-color prep. Okay, so let's talk about step two, what you do during color. This is a little bit more in the hands of your stylist. I like to find someone who uses Olaplex in the color treatment. So I believe it's Olaplex one or two, don't quote me on that, but you can ask your stylist what they do or if they use a bond repair in their treatments. This might even be standard. I like to ask, I just like to know. When I first moved to Nashville and I was looking for a new stylist, one of my requirements was that they used Olaplex. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of stylists around here that use that regularly in their salons. Uh, but there is another version, I believe, by Redkin, and that's what my stylist uses. But I just like to clarify, it gives me a sense of comfort. So that's what I do or have them do, and then that's what I ask for when looking for a stylist. So just a simple question. I think also expressing your needs and your wants when you're with your stylist as to maintaining your healthy hair, that you like to wear your hair naturally, just so that you guys are on the same page. So nice line of clear communication. All right, and then post color. So this is probably the most involved area. So I like to do deep conditioning treatments regularly every single week. And I keep this up for a long time, but I usually deep condition every week because my hair needs it, so this isn't too outside of my realm. But definitely stay on top of this. If you're not um, a weekly deep conditioner, conditioner, <laughs> I don't know. If you don't typically do this weekly, that's okay, but I would suggest staying on top of this, especially after you color your hair, if you're lightening your hair. I think that's what I should have said from the beginning. If you're doing a lightening service, if you are lightening your hair from its original color, you're opening your cuticle, you're, you're kind of stripping away your hair by lightening your hair. So that's what's going to change your porosity and make it higher. It's more damaging. From what I'm told from a professional stylist who specializes in curly hair, if you are darkening your hair, if you're dyeing it darker than the base color of your hair, you're not doing much damage. It's really just depositing color onto your hair, so you're not necessarily um, changing its porosity. So that's just a quick side note I wanna make clear. When I'm talking about coloring hair, I'm talking about lightening it because I bleached my hair, so that's what I'm talking about. Now, now let's talk about Olaplex 3 is part of my post color uh, treatments. So Olaplex 3 is the take home product. It is a bond repair. This is not a deep conditioning treatment. It will help restore or repair, not permanently, it won't fix your damaged hair, but it will make it more manageable. It'll, it'll make it appear healthier and it'll help maintain some of those nice curls and the waves and the curl clumps. This is meant to help with bond repair after mechanical damage, chemical damage, chemical, 
color service. So I like to use this. How I use this will vary. If it's immediate post color, what I like to do is leave my hair alone first and foremost. I let it just sit for a few days. I don't immediately wash it when I get home. Uh, it's been through a lot, so I've just given it a moment to breathe several days, however long you're comfortable with, however long you can get away with not washing your hair and still be okay with how it looks. Then I get into washing it. So I will just dampen my hair. Typically, I'll just dampen it because there's probably not a lot of product in my hair from it being uh, colored at the salon. It's just, I don't ask for much to be done with it. I might leave with wet hair or damp hair. That's just preference. I don't really like the way other people style my hair, so I don't have any problem leaving with damp hair. But you can have them even do a loose braid so you don't feel like you're leaving a salon with damp hair or have them blow it out if you want. But I you typically leave with my hair unstyled and I go home. So there's not really product in my hair. So by the time I get to my first Olaplex treatment, I just dampen my hair for the sake of making it easier to spread this product in my hair. And then I will go into my wash day as normal, shampoo, deep condition with my neutral protein filler drops, wash out style. Now, what I'm going to be doing today because I do have a lot of stuff going on in my hair. When you see me start this Olaplex video at the end or the letter half of this video, I am actually gonna clarify first. The reason I'm clarifying is there's a lot of product in my hair. I'm actually on day four or five, which I never get to, but I'm trying <laughs> to extend the wash of my hair because again, I'm trying to back off from upsetting it with all the warm water that I like to use and I use heat when I diffuse, so I'm just trying to give it a break. So I will be clarifying today and then I will be applying this after I clarify and then I'm gonna rinse this out and go into my deep conditioning treatment. So that's what I do. That is how I prepare for color, what I do during and after. I hope that's helpful. Also something that I wanna note when you're getting your hair colored and you're finding a stylist, it is very important that you are crystal clear with each other on what you're asking for. Um, I did not get to this bright shade of blonde overnight. This took well over a year. It is a process. If you find a stylist and you have dark brown hair and they say that they can take you to that platinum bleach blonde in one or even two sessions, I'd probably run because you're lifting so much out of your hair. It is literally opening the cuticle of your hair so it's very susceptible to breakage you're going to scorch your hair. Um, now, I'm not a professional. I, I always like to make that very clear, but from my previous experiences, I have lightened very quickly and has not panned out well. My hair was so fried, so destroyed, awfully frizzy, but that was all prior to this wonderful method that I started doing um, with getting my hair back to its healthy state. So. Be very clear, let them know what you'd like to do and then get a sense of how long that might take, how many steps. This is, can be very expensive if you are trying to go very light, but it takes time. So I think we learn that by trying to restore our natural pattern, that that alone takes time. So anything worth um, waiting for is certainly worth it to me. So. That's all I have to say on that. And then I know I also wanted to answer some of the questions that you guys had asked me on Instagram. So let's get into that quickly as well. I'm back. So I'm just opening my computer. I'm just gonna read these off as I see them and I'll answer them. These answers are not gonna be premeditated. So I watched your videos, deep conditioning. Da, da, da. Do you use Olaplex before, after, or both? So I just answered this. I use it uh, after. The Olaplex 3, I use after. There is a bond repair service used during my treatment. I have not seen the, uh, I have not reaped benefits from using it beforehand, so I use it after. What color do you ask for? I ask for ashy blonde. I prefer cooler tones with my skin tone, warmer tones, anything with a hint of orange or red in it does not tend to look good and in my opinion i don't like the color on me so i ask for ashy blonde as for specific shades by uh, redken i know that they use redken color on my hair i'm not sure i'm not the stylist again i just kind of show them photos of what i like we talk through it and then they work their magic as stylists would love if you threw out how you found your stylist since you moved to a new place okay so this is just a little bit of research um 
I mentioned that I was really firm on finding someone that used Olaplex in their service, but I just went on Yelp. I found some top rated salons in my area for colorists specifically, and I called them and just said, hey, I'm looking for someone who's really good with blondes and I'm interested to see what type of bond repair you use in your color service. A lot of them said they use Redken. I cannot recall what the name of the Redken product is that they use, but they use the Redken one. I have one say that they get Olaplex from time to time and use it, but they use the Redken one. So I ended up finding someone who used Redken and it has been working out just fine. I'm a little bit on the side of Olaplex just because I've been using it for years and I use the take home and I love it, but the Redken ones seem to work just fine. So that's how I kicked off my search. I ended up not finding a colorist right away, but I found a diva cut stylist because I wanted to try a dry cut. I had primarily done wet cuts in the past and was just curious to see what the hype was about. And I was a little bit skeptical that a diva cut wouldn't even make sense for me having a looser pattern. I just didn't understand exactly why that would work for my hair type. And I was also in the position of I'm looking for stylists anyway, so maybe this is just the time to try it out. So I found a Diva Cut stylist. I found him, I believe, just by going to the Diva Curl website. And then I looked up the salon he was at on Yelp. And then I found the salon's page on Instagram and his page just to see his work. You have to do your research. You don't want to just find anybody. And then you go to their Instagram page and you find out, oh, I don't really like the look of a lot of the the photos that are being shown. So <clears throat> do your research. That's 2020 stalking for you. <laughs> so that's what I did. And then once I spoke with him, there was somebody in the salon naturally that he recommended. I spoke with her. I talked to her a little bit about what I was looking for. She was in person when I met her. So she was able to see my hair. So we had a good conversation. I also discussed with her in depth when I met with her about what I was looking for and it ended up working out beautifully. I would also suggest that if you're getting your hair colored for the first time by somebody new and you're feeling very specific about what you're asking for, is that you let them, don't leave with wet hair, first of all, because you wanna see the color, you wanna make sure that it looks good. So in my last color service, I mentioned that I do normally leave with wet hair in my last color service because this is so much lighter than what I'm used to. I did ask that they blow it out. I wanted to see how it blended at the top. I wanted to make sure that it looked nice and I guess well blended. I don't like really streaky highlights in my hair. So I wanted to make sure that everything looked natural and soft. So it was important to me to have them just blow it out, even if it was just the top layer so I could see what it looked like. And then I wasn't going to leave unhappy or get home and find out that once I've styled it that you know, there's a massive color streak in my hair somewhere that I didn't like. So it was important for me to do. Do you get all over color or just highlights? I think this kind of plays off of what I was just saying. I do highlights. I do tiny little baby highlights. They use the back um, stick on the comb and there's probably a word for it and I just don't know it because again, I'm not a professional, but I know that she weaves in tiny little pieces of hair. I can't even show you, but just she gets tiny little pieces of hair brushes the color on and then puts it up in foils. So my hair is in foils. And then when I get it to the bowl and they're um, getting ready to just kind of use a little bit of toner to make sure it's the right shade. And then they do a little bit, I think it's called a base bump, but don't quote me on that. I essentially just asked that it was well blended into the roots. I also pull my color up as close to my root as possible. So while I am going after a balayage look, it's not really a balayage because it's not like it gradually turns into a lighter color. The reason that I bring it up as close as I can to my root is because I want to extend the wear of my color. This worked wonderfully for me my last time because COVID happened. So I bought myself those extra months of it not looking awful when it had grown out. It, it was fine. It looked a lot better than if I had balayaged it traditionally. But that's just what I like to do. Again, I like to buy myself time for my hair to heal between color processes. Um, and again, just take care of it as much as I can. Next question. How do you maintain your moisture balance after bleaching? I think I answered this as well. Deep conditioning treatments on a weekly basis. I really like to use my protein filler. This adds a nice structure to my hair. 
uh, my hair being so high porosity eats up protein. So I add the protein to my deep conditioner, but I like to deep condition uh, on a weekly basis after until my hair starts to feel like it's going a little bit back to normal. And that Olaplex 3 does make a really big difference. Can you tell us how you get your hair cut? So I mentioned I was doing Diva Cuts. It's a curl by curl dry cut. That works wonderfully for me. I really have enjoyed them. I also have done wet cuts. Now I can't explain the curl by curl cut because that is unique to everyone's own hair. It depends on how your hair clumps, your hair pattern, the shape that you're going after. And again, I'm not a professional, so I can't tell you how to cut that. But what I ask for when my hair is uh, going through a wet cut, which I do still enjoy and would happily do again, I ask for layers starting just below my chin because I, I really want this fullness and I need my hair to be a little bit shorter to get some of that poof. <laughs> but I still ask to maintain my length. So you can see my hair is still a little bit longer. Looks a little straggly here because again, I'm on day four or five, but um, my hair is still longer, but I ask for layers um, starting just below my chin. So that's my cut when I get a wet cut. Next question. Is your hair thick? No, <laughs> it looks like it's thick because I use a lot of product to make it look like it's thick. Shout out sea salt spray. <laughs> um, another thing that'll make your hair nice and dry. So moisturize after that, but uh, no, it's not thick. The width of my hair is probably medium to fine. Yeah, I'd say medium to fine, but my hair is definitely not thick. And in terms of my hair density, um, you can see my scalp a little bit, but it's not super prominent, so I would just say medium density. Next question. Can you use Olaplex on virgin hair? Yes, you absolutely can. It's a bond repair. It's not gonna cause any damage to your hair, if anything. It's just gonna help get you out of a funk, <laughs> I guess. I've seen people with virgin hair use it and have wonderful results. Sometimes I just call it my master reset button. If everything I'm doing is not working and it's been a while since an Olaplex treatment, I'll toss this into the mix and that works wonderfully. What kind of layers do I need so the back and sides of my hair won't lose the curl due to the weight of my hair? I hope this makes sense. Yes, it does make sense. So when my hair gets a little bit too long, it completely loses shape, especially in the back and on the sides, just as you're describing. So I can't say again, because I'm not a professional, what type of layers. I would just say that, you know, for me, I want to maintain my length. So I like the, the bottom half to be a little bit longer. And then I wanted volume. So that would mean I needed to have some shorter layers. I would just express that to your stylist that these are some of the problem areas that you have and let them kind of walk you through what they think would work. If it sounds good to you, go for it. If it doesn't sound like what you wanna do, uh, keep looking for someone else. <laughs> uh, but I would probably trust their expertise, but I don't, I don't know that there's like an exact cut that I could describe to you. Do you need to have a special hair stylist for curly hair? I don't think so, not in all cases. Again, I can only speak from my own experience in my curl pattern and my hair type. I have had both wet cuts and dry curl by curl curly cuts and loved both. I am especially keen on these dry cuts that I've been getting. They've been giving me so much more life, but would I go back to a wet cut? Absolutely, if that's what I was working with, definitely I would do it. I think this might be a different conversation if you were asking somebody who has a much tighter curl pattern and was looking for a very specific shape. You might need to find someone who's a little bit more specific or versed in curly hair, but with my looser wave curl pattern, I, I don't really have issues doing wet cuts or dry curly cuts. I recall you used to live in Chicago. Can you recommend a stylist in the area? Yes, I can. Yes, I did live in Chicago. I went to Goran Coben Salon. I specifically went to Jill. She's absolutely amazing. She was with me when I started this whole journey. I went to her for years. She nailed my blonde every time. She did wet cuts on me. They worked out perfectly. I would see her again in a heartbeat, but that is absolutely irrational for me to think that I would drive up to Chicago or fly back up to Chicago and pay all the money just to pay all the money to get my hair cut and colored. So I highly recommend them. Goran Coben is in both River North and Lincoln Park. I believe she works at both locations. So you just need to call, get her schedule and find out which one she'll be at. 
what products did you use because your waves look so bouncy and soft? Thank you. Um, I use primarily Innersense products, at least when it comes to styling, but I have a whole video on my favorite products on this channel, so go ahead and check that out. But most of what I use are pretty lightweight, and with the Innersense products, they're heavily concentrated, so a little bit goes a long way, which means that my hair doesn't need a lot of product for me to get the results that I want. All right, I think that's all the questions, guys. So I am going to finish the rest of this video off with the Olaplex treatment. Again, you're gonna find me in my bathroom in the next scene. I will be clarifying first, applying the Olaplex treatment, rinsing that out, deep conditioning, styling, and then I'll show you the results after that. So stick around if you wanna see the process for the Olaplex 3. Okay, so I just clarified my hair. If you're curious what I use, I used the Wash and Scrub Probiotic, uh, Detox Probiotic from Carl Smith. It's great stuff, has little exfoliating beads kind of in there, so it gets you really nice clean. So what I'm going to do, what I need, my Olaplex 3, a brush, and then I make sure to have some clips on me um, to help clip back sections of my hair, and of course keep my towel on so I don't soak my shirt while I'm sitting up. So. I'm essentially just gonna get my hair into four sections. Um, I'm not as thorough about this as a lot of other people are because, I don't know, I'm just not. <laughs> so I'm going to get the top half up and then have my two halves of the bottom section. Smooth that out. size amount for each section. So work that in all the way up to the root. Okay, so after I've applied the product to that section of hair, I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to make sure it's just fully and evenly distributed. Having the brush with all the bristles is really going to help move that product around in my hair. Make sure it gets every strand. Okay. And then there's two ways that you can twist your hair up. Now some people do smaller sections than this, but again, this is just how I do it. Um, they might take two pieces and twist them in on themselves. Like this. Okay. But the way that I do it is essentially, I just twist it up. <laughs> because it's a little quicker but do whatever works for you so I'm gonna do this the rest of my head um, I'm not gonna bore you but I'll do this in this section this section and then two sections on the top I'll split in half and then um, I'm going to put a cap on so I'll come back when I I'll put the cap on so you can see what I did from there okay so my hair is in the four sections again just kind of twisted in on itself not the classiest look, but what I'm going to do is put this little shower cap on and then I'm going to cover it just to help keep some heat in, but because I have such high porosity here, it doesn't really need the heat. The heat is supposed to help lift the cuticle so that whatever treatment you're doing can penetrate um, the hair a little bit better. Again, my hair is really high porosity, especially because I just bleached it again, so it doesn't really need this, but I like it because it feels kind of spa-like, so treat yourself. Anyway, I'm going to put this on. If you don't have a shower cap, I normally don't have these, but if you don't have them, you can use just a plastic shopping bag. Um, if you have little mini garbage cans that you use in your restrooms, um, you can use that on your head instead of one of these plastic caps. Whatever works for you. It doesn't need to be fancy because you're probably really not going anywhere with it on anyway. Um, and then you're going to cover it with something. So I'll put this on. super easy. And then I'm going to put this on over it. If you do not have one of these cute little uh, caps from Hot Head, I suggest getting one. Or you can um, just use a microfiber towel just to help keep it on your head. I also like to keep this on so if it does start to kind of drip through, the cap catches it. 
So a towel works nicely as well. Okay, and then from here, I am going to let this sit on my hair for about an hour. Um, when I'm done, I'm not gonna film this part, but just to tell you what I'm doing next, I'm gonna take this out, I'm gonna rinse my hair out to completely get the Olaplex out of my hair, and then I'm going to pick up with my conditioner, my deep conditioner. Um, so I'm gonna do that with the neutral protein filler applied to the palm full of product. I'm just going to deep condition my hair for a few minutes, um, and then I'm gonna rinse it out and go into my normal styling routine. This isn't technically considered a styler, but I'll start with my leave-in. Probably gonna use my weightless air dry cream, and I swear this video is not sponsored by Curl Smith. This is all just products that I've been really into lately. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this, maybe a quarter size amount or more, depending on how my hair feels um, once I'm done. And then I'll go into applying my Innersense I Create Hold Styling Gel. Um, Y'all know I'm a huge fan of this stuff, which is why I have this jumbo salon size bottle now. And then I might use a little bit of the I Create Lift Volumizing Foam. If not part of the actual styling, I might use it to scrunch out my cast, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So I'm going to sit with this, wash it out, style, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like when we're all done. All right, we're back, here it is. Um, you can see now in um, a little bit better lighting, um, I'm by a window, so you can see my hair is much lighter, my roots have been touched up, you get a better sense for the color, but this is it guys, this is after my Olaplex treatment. My hair feels really soft. It bounced back so nicely. Um, I, I just, <laughs> I cannot survive coloring my hair without having some Olaplex. So that's my color prep, that's what I do. Um, I actually did switch up my stylers. I said I was gonna do a leave-in and then do the I Create Hold gel by Innersense and then the I Create Lift Foam, but what I actually did is I skipped the leave-in and I went for the Bounce Curl Clump and Define Cream. This stuff is a really nice hit of moisture, which I just felt like I really wanted to use a curl cream to enhance some of the definition, but to also get some of that moisture in there. And then I went over it with the I Create Hold gel. And then I hammock diffused, pixie diffused to 100%. And then I put like half a pump of foam in my hand, emulsified it, and then scrunched it in to break the cast. I honestly didn't have much of a cast at all today because I didn't use much gel. But I'm so happy with how soft this is. It feels really light. I don't feel like I have anything in my hair. Um, I don't know if this is going to help. I used about two and a half pumps out of that um, container, but if you just have the standard size gel, it's probably closer to three or four pumps because a lot comes out in that one pump, but yeah, this is it. It's a wrap. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to drop them below. I hope that helps. But yeah, Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you can, and I'll keep coming with videos that you guys love the most. All right, thanks guys.